Okay, thanks for clicking on this little takeaway from The Remains of the Day by Kajua Ishiguru, published in 1989. And yeah, you know, it is a tiny little takeaway, really. It's just something to notice, but it actually has um, potentially, you know, deeper um, meanings and in terms of like the way we look at literature and the way we, we take in the information that we get. So what I'm going to give to you today is, is um, you know, before the text even starts, before the first paragraph, we're looking at Prologue, July 1956, Darlington Hall. And I would guess most people look at that as a date and place it, OK, we've got the 50s, and, and then they move on to reading. Without asking that question, which is, <clears throat> you know, really important when you're, I think, going through your life, uh, but let's put that aside, but, you know, especially when you're studying a book and you're trying to work out what it means... Um, what what's the significance of July 56? That's a good question. It's always a good question. What's the significance of this piece of information I've, I'm getting? What's, this, what's the deeper significance of it? It's saying one thing to me, but what's behind that? So the question is, why July 1956? What's important about July 1956, quite a specific date? Why not February 1956 or December 56 or January 55 or March 57? What is it about July 56? Now, there might be nothing. It might completely be an arbitrary date. But have a look. Let's have a look. Because if it is significant and you don't know it, you might be missing something. And this is why studying literature is so fascinating, because it trains us to look it trains us to go a little bit deeper in terms of what things mean rather than just naturally taking everything at face value. There's always, I think, a potential subtext there, you know. So um, what do we find when we when we do a little bit of research about July 56? We find this actually is an interesting date. And it's not just arbitrarily interesting. Something didn't happen that doesn't really connect to the book. It specifically connects to the book. So that, again, is fascinating. What is it? It's the start of the Suez Crisis. And regarded, you know, by historians as a significant date because the Suez Crisis really is the... Um, the, the, the marker that signifies the, the end of the British Empire, the end of the dominant power of Britain as a global player, you know, able to act unilaterally in its own interests. Um, you know, that has been over for a while, probably, but historians regard this as a demonstration, a, a real clear signifier that that power is, is no longer held. You know, the, I don't, I'm not a historian, but just generally the the Egyptians um, nationalised the Suez Canal, you know, stop its free use, um, and Britain and France don't like it, and they want to do something about it, and the Americans say, no, we're not going to get involved in that. That's not what's going to happen. And and I think that's very, very interesting. Um, now, and as I say, yeah, you, you know, historians regard that as a significant day in history that marks the end of the British kind of, you know, role as a global player. Um now, why is that significant in this book? Well, it just so happens that this book is about Britishness. It's about, it's, you know, it's published in 1989, but it's looking back at a different time, a different kind of Britishness. Um, you know, the, the Britishness of a rigid class structure, a, mo a more rigid ca class structure, let's say, where you have butlers and service is a thing. Um, you know, you, you have class, um, you know, there, there is a sense that what's happening in Stevens's life with Darlington Hall being sold to an American, that, that you know, we're marking a change. British culture is changing. Now, Ishiguru has that as the core of the book. That's what the book is about. It's about that change. It's about Stevens reconciling, reconciling himself, you know, with the past and with this change that's coming, that's bringing new things to him. The book is about that. And then Izuguri chooses July of 1956 as the date, uh, you know, the, the, the very first date, the very fir first piece of concrete information you get is that date. Now, I think that's not a coincidence. I think that is important and I think that helps us understand the, you know, the, the, the kind of exchange or the conversation that this book wants to have, if you like. You know, what is this book about? It's something to do with Britishness. It's something to do with the Britishness that we're not experiencing anymore. A Britishness that kind of was in the past, 
And if we start to think in those terms, then we can we can maybe start conversations about what Britishness is and what it is now and what it might have been then. And, you know, you can start all those conversations. It's not to say there's, you know, there's necessarily a right and wrong here, but it's just always about starting conversation. So listen, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't noticed that, if you haven't, notice july 56 is important or or is potentially significant let's say that um what you could end up doing is say wow this is book is you know it's just about butler it you know what's interesting about it which i actually had said to me (laughs) on occasions um when i've done this book in the past people have said you know i've read a few pages and it's just about butler the butler's life is it a bit boring um again potentially if you read it at face value but there's always subtext. Everything is subtext in a way. There's always another meaning potential there. Um, and, you know, it's up to us to, I think, if we want to enrich our lives and we want to just find out the kind of deeper significance of things, I think we need um, to, do, to do that work. You know, it's, a, it's rich fruit. <laughs> so that's my little takeaway there. Um, July 1956, is it significant? I'd suggest it is. Um, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you.